on 19 Keys, and this is high level conversation. Is hip hop still hip hop? Like when you see somebody like uh, Playboy Cardi, mm -hmm. is he hip hop? Right? And I ask that question because hip hop has evolved so, evolved or devolved so far from what its original culture and expression was. Does it still get to be added into the continuity of what hip hop is? Or is it this new genre of music that hasn't been classified, so it's just been thrown? into the box of hip hop. So, let me tell you why it's difficult for me to answer. It's difficult for me to answer because the fundamentals of hip hop music, I'm less, uh, I'm less knowledgeable on. I, what I know is that music evolves and expression evolves, but a lot of times I hear stuff and it don't sound like rap to me. It don't sound like hip hop mm -hmm. to me. It sounds foreign. It, it, it's so influenced by other things because remember, it, it, you know, some of these people are listening to craft work. They listen to all kinds of different things, look for things from overseas. And that, that, that can elevate a genre, right? Mm. When you hear late registration, Kanye goes, goes against John Bryan to play keys on late registration. And so if you listen to Portis Head or Fiona Apple or any of those other, you know, alternative, uh, things, Tom York, any of that stuff, you hear it, but it's, it's, it's the underlay of this musicianship over the beats that you got, the rhymes that you got. Very familiar cultural expression. There is a point where I get to stuff and I just don't understand it. I guess the question would be if you ask like Ninth Wonder or if you ask like Pete Rock or if you ask like any of those guys, if you ask Sway from there in, in Northern California, uh, going to be exact. Uh, like one of the most knowledgeable guys, if you ask Premier, the question would be what they think it was hip hop because they're so knowledgeable in the music, in uh, the sonic profiles. They can say, well, let me tell you, like I interviewed Manny Fresh. I interviewed Manny Fresh and Manny Fresh was telling me about New Orleans bounce music. Mm. And the culture where I'm from, and I'm from Baton Rouge, but we all listen to bounce music in South Louisiana. The culture where I'm from is so distinct. Mm -hmm. It is. Y'all be calling each other B words and yeah. all kinds. Of that's 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 less than Baton Rouge. That's kind of a New Orleans thing. That's but, a New Orleans thing. Yeah, but it's, it's it's love. But um, they are cousins. But it's like that. When I listened to him talk about it, he was telling me about their influences, and their influences was it was this very very bass heavy New York stuff, and they took that stuff. Mm. And y'all can go listen. This is what Manny said. I'm not saying it. New Orleans bounce was a derivative of, 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 of New York stuff. He told me that. And I would have never thought that. I thought that stuff would have come from some of the up-tempo type of New Orleans South type. I would have never thought that that is. But he tells, he's telling me the beginnings of it because mm -hmm. he's one of the fathers of it. Um, and so I can't break it down like that. All I know is it don't feel like hip-hop to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It don't feel, because even when the genre expands, trap still felt like hip-hop, right? Right. Um, like, cause I think it was still expressing yeah. the culture. Right. It's that like a lot of this stuff still felt like hip hop. Like you can part it can be party music and still be hip hop because it's still creating curating a vibe for it. It's still expressing. When you listen to some of this stuff, it don't even feel like it's coming from our culture at all. Whereas the, it doesn't, it feels alien. It doesn't yeah. feel like nothing. I'm, I'm not trying to, by the way, I sound so old. I'm not trying no, to. I don't think that that. I think it's it's funny. I don't. I think it's up to date when you give commentary. People always say, "Oh, we just we're doing an observation on what it is today, right? Right versus what it was." So you can, because if 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 you were in a coma from 1990 to 2000, goddamn 23, and you woke up and somebody told you this is hip hop, you oh, it's not. It's 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 like it's a bunch of niggas. And it'd side. be a lot for you to have to explain to be like. It's, this is what happened along the way. Like if hip hop was a child that grew up and it went through all of these phases, mm -hmm. right? This phase would be considered something completely different. So it went through a hip hop phase. You probably would have said, right? So give an example. Like so, when Thug, when when Thug first came out, uh -huh. I didn't get it. Yeah. But then the more I listened to Thug, yeah, the more I was like, oh my god, like Thug feels like an old school blues singer in a way. His voice is the instrument, mm -hmm. and so it's like. So even the, all the stuff he was doing, it sounded very familiar right. because of like the the blues music and the stuff that I would listen to down south. It, it, it feels like that. 
Then there were people that were influenced by him that did bad right. versions of it. Yeah, take it. And then route. it just became syllable. Yeah, but over see, really, and I can really say, dark beats, and I, I kind of don't get it no more. But that's why I can say somebody like Thug, so you take trap music, take things of that nature, it's still expressing the culture from a different perspective, right? It's almost like the Atlanta perspective or the New Age Atlanta perspective. Some of these people be like, I'm trying to be a rock and roll star, mm. right? But everything always gets thrown under the umbrella of hip hop. So even when you see things that, you know, when they go all the way out and they intentionally do it differently, but their record label still categorize it as hip hop. So now hip hop has to take the hit for anything and everything. Anything that's that, any message that's almost that anything that black people does. Right. You know what I mean? And being black is not to say you hip hop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a and that's why within. we don't get those distinctions. Yeah. And then we don't distinct from the 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 industry, which is the business of it which is completely different driver of what the expression of it, because now everybody has to monetize their platforms and what they speak about. And so they learn the science of, I have to make a song like this versus this is what I want to say. Right, right, right. right? right so right, those right. become two completely different things because hip hop was about people going in there and trying to get as real as possible and trying to be themselves as much as possible and then making a record off of that. But now it's like, you we we scientists with it. Mm -hmm. So when I think about somebody like Thug and some some of the new cats, they're like scientists. They go in there and be like, yo, this will work. Let me experiment with this. And they look at what works and then they go and repeat the formula. Mm. And they it, it's like they hacking. Right. Right? Versus making music. Right, right, right. Right. right, right. So I, I I think of it as something that has morphed into more of a science, right? Than more of magic. The more hip hop of magic started off as feeling. magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have a problem with that? Not necessarily. I listen to all kinds of different hip hop. I think that uh, I think that we should have these categories where we name it something different, though. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. You feel me? I think that if we if if we decide to start, because when you say hip hop, you think about something that start off from a found where well, you you ideally start off a foundation of these values mm -hmm. that represents us as a culture, right? But when you have things that are anti culture, right, or things that just for money, or things that the industry decides that hey, this gonna work good in the algorithm. It shouldn't be, in my opinion, considered hip hop itself, mm. right? Because you can rap and not be hip hop. Sure, right? Like that's like people rhyme in all categories of music. Yeah, Beyonce be rapping, right? Yeah, it doesn't mean that this is a rapper per se, but you can be a rapper and not be hip hop. We see that in country. We see that in all sort of things. So I just believe that it's important because hip-hop represents the culture mm. good or bad right. right when we export hip-hop they think of that as black people right right and it's like no that's this person's campaign that put up money behind this that think this work in this time that they want to influence these white kids over here that feel like it works on tiktok because people go dance to it right right, right. right? or they feel like because it's anti-hip-hop and a person is going against the norm of what may be masculine or paint your nails black or whatever it is these other children who feel socially distant as well and awkward, they're going to relate to this because they're anti-establishment. Right. So it's like everything shouldn't just be thrown under the bunch, especially when people are specifically being anti-hip-hop on purpose. It shouldn't also still be called hip-hop. Right. I wonder what... That's interesting. That's actually fascinating. I had never even considered that, but I'm telling you, for me, it's like when I, when I think about the... I, I rarely, bro, like there are new artists that I listen to, but... I mean, if I was to bring up title and and I'm listening to, right? I, I, I'm listening to 400 Degrees this morning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm like it, it, it's like the the stuff that I'm listening to now. Like I'm really in my old era. Yeah. Like it's it's well, we listen to things that are nostalgic to us, and this is why people are doing all of these remakes of movies and songs. Is because if 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 you grew up, and what you a boomer. What, what generation? The boomers were born in the 40s. <laughs> they were born in the 40s and the 50s, bro. Well, bad. Bro, well, bad. I was Just, born in 1980. Well, bad. What? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. How come y'all tell me this was I'm high level jokes? Yo, I was, this, this, like, I was this trying, guy. Well, I'm, I'm a boomer. To... The boomers is 1945. God damn! <laughs> I was just trying to categorize you, my bad, brother. No, but but what I was saying is they say scientifically, right? They done these studies about music and 
if you the the music that you grew up with is what you're most connected to, mm. right? So people do these remixes of sounds because it, it connects them to the music. Puts you back there. I was growing up. It, it brings you back to that feeling. It brings you back to that nostalgia. Mm -hmm. So now there's a lot of nostalgia music out there because sure. they realize you can sell that to a group of people and at least a certain group of people go connect to that. They're going to listen to it. They're going to spin it. We can make money off that. Word up. Right? And that's why the mixtape era was so beautiful to me because that was a time where rappers get to go in there and they said what was on their heart. They right. said what was on their mind. They was going based on, yo, this is my talent, this is my skill, I want to out-rap. Lil Wayne came out and he was like, I'm going to pick everybody beat and, just, and I'm just going to go crazy. Yeah, and punish them on it. That was a different era. Now, they don't even truly get to express their real thoughts because they worrying about the numbers. Right. Right? So it's less based on the expression. It's less based on the art and it's more about the numbers and about the business. Mm -hmm. And that changes music and what it is. So. We like things from our era because we connected to it. It right. doesn't make you old. There's going to be a certain time when this generation is going to like things from this era. They're only going to listen to Thug exactly. and Cardi. Yeah. And it's because it becomes harder to like something new because you don't have a connection to it. Right, right, right. Right? You, you, you're already, you know, um, you know, ingrained in who you are. And so you're like, nah, I don't connect to this unless you purposely try to keep yourself young by staying up to date and forcing yourself to listen to these things to connect to the perspective of this era and this generation, mm. which which I do, because I, I don't want to be outdated. But then sometimes stuff goes so far where it's like, I don't even want to connect to whatever feeling this is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like if hip hop goes through some weird, well, here we, we are there. Hip hop goes through weird demon rock era, right? Mm. Which where a lot of rappers are at right now. Yeah. I don't want to connect to that. Yeah. I understand what that is. It's anti-establishment. People are like, Corporate society wise, people are against the government. So anything anti establishment, people are for, right? Candidates, uh, music, brands, whatever, they push that out there because they know the feelings. They study the people, and this stuff is based on quantitative data now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, being outdated, right, is not a real thing. It's just, I'm in connection to things that, that are nostalgic serve from me my era. And that, that I'm just, I feel you. Yeah. I get it. But I want to thank you, brother, for coming on my no show. No problem, man. Having this high-level conversation, young man. I appreciate That's you. That's a workout, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Y'all got it. What is this? I got it popping over here, man. That's a, that's a workout. We in, woo, went around the world and came back again, man. I really appreciate the conversation, yes, brother. Sir. For that's real, the high-level experience. Appreciate man. you, brother. Thank you for constantly pushing the envelope out there um, and, 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 and just being the outlier. Appreciate it, man. You know I mean, I think where your, where your voice exists, you exist in between these worlds. Mm. You feel me? And you get to see stuff on that side and tell it to this side. Right. Sometimes you like, okay, I see what they thinking. Then sometimes you be like, listen, I know I was cool on that last subject, but on this one, y'all tripping. Right, right, right. You feel right, me? Right. And we need people like that because you become a bridge. I appreciate that, bro. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Peace, family. This has been your high-level conversations.